In this video tutorial, I have a remote desktop connection to my Raspberry Pi, and I want to install Webmin on the Raspberry Pi. Webmin is a web browser based interface for managing a Linux computer. We can install Webmin on the Raspberry Pi and then manage it from another computer using a web browser. Now security is always a concern, especially with Webmin, so we'll want to set up SSL encryption and make sure that when we connect to the Raspberry Pi through the Webmin, we do it securely over HTTPS. We may also want to set up an SSH port tunnel for enhanced security. Either way, it should be fun. So the first thing we'll want to do is open up a terminal and I already did this, but you'll want to do this first. Do a sudo app-get update and run this command first. Now I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it. I'll start with installing the packages that I need. So I'll do a sudo app-get install perl libnet-sslei-perl open SSL lib authen dash pam dash Perl lib pam dash runtime lib io dash pty dash Perl app dash show dash versions and Python. So this will install all of these programs and libraries. Perl, libnet ssl eay perl space open SSL space lib authen pam perl lib pam runtime lib io pty perl uh, dash pty dash perl app dash show dash versions and python okay this will take a second i'll press enter and this might take a while all right i'll press y all right i pressed y and pressed enter and i'll pause the recording and come back once the installation of these packages has finished okay the installation finished so now we need to go ahead and install Webmin. Now to install Webmin, what we'll do is we'll install from the Webmin repository by adding the repository to our repository list. Now to do this, we'll do a sudo nano and we'll go into the etc apt folder and edit sources.list and in here this is the list of our repositories you could see that we have the Raspbian repository so this is the repository list and what we'll need to do is we'll add deb http colon forward slash forward slash download dot webmin dot com forward slash download forward slash repository space sarge space contrib and let me just take a look at this make sure that I type that correctly and then on the next line and this is at the just at the bottom of the file by the way I just added this at the bottom of the file using nano HTTP whoops there's a mistake I put a semicolon there there we go, colon. Webmin dot mirror dot somerset tech solutions dot co dot uk forward slash repository space sarge space contrib. Okay, those look like I typed them correctly. So I'll save this, control X, Y, and enter. And now what I'll want to do is, 
let me clear this. Now what I'll want to do is I'll need to get the GPG key to access the repository. To do this, what you'll want to do is put in a wget command, http colon forward slash forward slash www dot webmin dot com forward slash j cameron dash key dot asc and I'll get the key and then I'll add the key by putting in a sudo app dash key add j cameron dash key dot asc and that should add the key. So now that we've added the webmin repositories to our repository source list and we've added the key so that we can access the repository, all we want to do now is run a sudo app-get update and then after we run the sudo app-get update I'll run a sudo app-get install webmin. Now this update will once again take a little while so I'll pause the recording and then I'll come back to install webmin. Okay, the update's finished. So now all I need to do is run a sudo app-get install webmin. And now it'll download and install webmin. Okay, webmin has finished being installed. So now what I can do is, this is once again a remote desktop connection to my Raspberry Pi. I'll go back to my Windows computer I'll open up a browser interface and I'll attempt to connect to the computer 192.168.3.60 in this case on port 10,000. And when I do you can see that I get an error and it says that the web server is already running in SSL mode use HTTPS instead. So this is good news. So all I have to do is go back up here, type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, press enter, and it looks like I'm getting a connection. I'll add the exception and confirm the security certificate. And I've got a login screen for webmin at the IP address of my Raspberry Pi using secure HTTPS on port 10,000. I'll put in the username for my Pi, which is Pi, and my password that I have configured, and I'll log in. So now I have a management interface to manage my Raspberry Pi Linux computer using this web browser, and it's pretty cool. For instance, in a previous lab, we installed Samba. So if I click on Servers, and I go down to Samba Windows File Sharing, I can see the settings for my Samba file server. It shows me the different shares that I've set up and their locations. It shows me where I can set up my Windows networking, where I can set up or users. I can set up Samba users. I can set up Samba groups. I can even convert users and do all of the configurations necessary to connect Samba to an active directory domain on a Windows server. I can stop the Samba server, restart the Samba server. I can add new file shares. You can see it says here, create a new file share. I can create a new printer share, all kinds of things. So I can configure Samba using this graphical user browser-based interface and it's it's quite nice. I can go to my Apache web server and take a look at it and see what's running on my Apache web server. I can get to global configuration and configure it here nice and easily, create virtual hosts, all kinds of things just using this interface. I'll close servers, go to system, and you can see that I can change passwords, I can pretty much do almost all of the features that I can work on directly on the Linux Raspberry Pi computer from this web browser. And I've got a secure connection over HTTPS. 
Now, probably you don't want to install Webmin in a secure server situation where security is extremely important because you're sending all of this information across the browser. I can go in here and look at my hardware, look at the partitions on my local disk, all kinds of things, and it just gives me an interesting way of managing the Linux system and it allows me to explore things in a different way. Notice under system, uh, boot up and shut down, uh, running processes, all kinds of things. And it's just very kind of a nice interface. Um, I can also configure networking, Linux firewall. Um, I can go into the webmin settings and change the webmin configuration. Let's take a look at the configuration. Here are configuration tools for configuring Webmin, including the security options. Here's the secure socket layer encryption settings. And as you can see, I can redirect non-SSL requests to HTTPS automatically. So I'll change that to yes. And you can see that uh, it's set to detect automatically. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty nice interface. Another thing that I can do right here from the Webmin configuration panel is go to ports and addresses and change the port, the default port that Webmin is listening on. This could add another layer of security as most people would check port 10,000 automatically for Webmin. I can also bind Webmin to uh, localhost 127.0.0.1 and have it listen only to itself. That way I could set up an SSH port tunnel from my computer to this computer and have Webmin go across that SSH port tunnel. So as you can see, there's tons to explore with Webmin.